Hello, Blake Rudis here with Everyday HDR and HDR Insider, and today I want to discuss one of the most powerful options in Photoshop that you've probably seen almost every day of your life that you're in there, but you just never used it because it either A, intimidated you, or B, you had no idea what blend if could mean. So what we're going to do is take a photo like this and make it look something like this with a very simple, very easy gradient overlay that protects our highlights and shadows for us. And we're going to jump into Photoshop shop and really dive pretty hard into these blend if so that you can understand what blend if means. All right, so here we're in Photoshop to talk about one of the most powerful yet most hidden things in Photoshop. And I say that it's right in front of our face. It's been there the whole time. It's right in the layer styles. You've probably seen it. You just disregard it. So to, to do that, I have an illustration here of a 50% gray background. This background is 50% gray. It's going to be important to understand when we start to get into this. This layer is all of the colors in the color wheel that have been blurred and kind of blended together. And then we have a white and black kind of transition in between. And this is a pure zero black layer on top. So now with the layer styles, let's just go ahead and double click in here and look at these layer styles. Now in the layer styles, we have the blending options. Typically those blending options are the same that you see right here. You have your opacity, you have your fill, and then you have your uh, different blending options that you could use here from soft light to overlay and so on and so forth. Actually, as we change this in the layer styles, it also changes it in the layers palette. So that's kind of important to understand also. So let's go beyond that. There's some advanced blending options, but let's not talk about those right now because blend if is what I really want to spend the time on. This is saying blend if gray in this layer or the underlying layer. And whoa, it's kind of confusing at first. So just watch this and hear me out. So what, what this is saying is that this layer is zero. So anything on the left side are pixels that are based on the uh, number factor of zero. So that being black. And then over here are anything in this layer that are pixel based at 255. So this is blend if gray. If we move this to the right, even one point, we're going to blend the entire lower layer with that top layer. And the reason being is because our top layer is zero black. All right, but let's go over to this side and start moving this over to the left. And this is where this layer is not going to change at all because we have no gray and we have no white in it. Okay, so it's important to understand the value of the layer you have on top before you start to look at the layer that's below. And then in this underlying layer, we actually do have gray. So what this is telling us is gray is going to be on the right hand side. As we move this to the right, it's going to incorporate those values that are the closest to this point of color of gray, which at this point there is none. All right, but as we move it, you start to see that this color green is actually about a 184 representation of the color gray. And then as we move it, move it, move it, to the left, to the left, to the left, all the way until about, let's say 130. These are all of the points of gray before 50% mid gray. And at 50% mid gray, we have 128 or 127.5. And that's where our 50% gray starts to show through our topmost layer. On the right hand side, this is going to say, okay, show me everything that's black on the underlying layer. Well, because our top layer is black, we aren't going to see that black spot, right? But as we move this to the right, we'll start to see all of those color values that start to get close to that 75 point of gray. So it's a very dark gray. That purple would be a very dark gray if it was rendered in grayscale. And then as we move it to the right, we start to get more potent forms of gray all the way until we get to that 50% gray on this side. The same thing rings true with red, green, and blue. So let's go to red. What this is saying is that we're going to blend anything in the underlying layer that is the color red. That's going to be red on this side and not black on this side. That's important to understand. So anything red on this side is going to blend through that top layer. On this side, it's going to be anything cyan, so anything opposite on the color wheel. So even though this says blend if red, it's actually blend if red slash cyan, because cyan is going to be on the left-hand side, and red is going to be on the right-hand side of that slider. These are the complementary color principles that we've talked about in the color zone system many times. You see how it always comes back in Photoshop. It's a very important course to take if you want to really amplify your uh, knowledge of color in Photoshop. So now let's go to green. This is going to say blend if the color green is in the underlying layer. 
So in the underlying layer, these are the areas of green. What's the opposite of green on the color wheel? If you answered magenta, here you go. All of our magentas are going to come through on this side. So that should be blend if green slash magenta. So now we have blend if blue. So if the underlying layer has any blue in it, which is going to be on this right hand side, start to show it through. Okay. Now what's the opposite of blue on the color wheel? If you're raising your hand, go ahead. Yep. It's yellow. All right. So anything yellow on the other side of this color wheel is going to show through. Now, if you're a traditional painter, uh, the opposite of blue on the color wheel is actually orange, but in the digital world, it's yellow. Okay. So that's going to come through on that other side. So what does this mean for your photographs? Okay, let's go ahead and minimize this and talk about a photo here. Let's go ahead and delete some of the work I've already done here. And let's look at this photograph. So let's say I wanted to color grade this photo and to color grade it, I'm going to go into the gradient map and I'm going to click on my gradient map and choose something. Um, let's choose something kind of off the wall like this color that'll work. Okay. So basically what this is saying is that anything green is going to be in the whitest areas of my photo. Anything red is going to be in the black areas of my photo and I can reverse that gradient to do the opposite. So now let's look at the blend if options. So if I double click this gradient map and I start to blend if it's going to protect areas of highlight on that underlying layer. Let's go ahead and zoom into these areas of highlight up here. So if I double click that, go into the layer styles and start to move that to the left, anything underlying that is white is going to be protected from that pretty poignant red that we have there. So as you see us doing this, it's giving us like a like a smeared kind of look. It's not, it's not a nice feathered look. So how do we do that? I mean, these blend if options would be pointless if they didn't have a nice blend to them, especially if I go over here and then I show you what this looks like, it's not very pretty. You see up here, we have these kind of pixelated blending. Well, let's go ahead and double click that again to go back into our layer styles. These handles have a line in between them. If you press alt or option and click on that line and move to the right, it's going to start feathering it. So this is basically saying that we're feathering all of the pixels of the color white in the underlying layer that are between 174 and 255. It's a kind of like a, if you can imagine uh, a gradient blend. Okay. So if we just press alter option, move that over. We can blend all the way until we get to the 50% gray form of the color white on the underlying layer. We press OK. We zoom out. And now anything that was white is now pretty much protected. So if we double click that, go back into those layer styles, we can even do that for the, the color black. Pressing alt or option. Always press alt or option so that you don't get that smeared kind of paint running down the wall look. Press alt or option to blend and blur it in. You see how powerful this effect is because not only can we do this now with that underlying layer, we can also change it to something like soft light and make that a really compelling photo or go to something like overlay and get it really dramatic looking. Press OK. Now let's say, just for instance, we wanted to add a curve to this. And then we'll add that curve and we'll heighten up our midtones. But when we heighten up those midtones, we want to keep the same protection on our, our blacks and our whites. How do we do that? Well, instead of going into these layer styles and copying all that information and writing it down, we can just right click on that gradient map, say copy layer style, go to curves one and say paste layer style. And now everything that was protected in our gradient map down here is now protected in that curves adjustment layer. So we've heightened what's going on in our, uh, in our midtones, but kind of protected those uh, blacks and whites that we had protected originally from our original photograph. And we have that nice color graded and very, uh, striking looking image now and see this is set to soft light we can set that to normal if we wanted to so that uh, it doesn't have that color cast to our photo we can even change it to luminosity so it doesn't affect the, the color really we just kind of boosted and amplified our areas of mid-tone and protected those areas of whites and darks so as you can see this is a really powerful tool that's been kind of hidden in Photoshop. And I really wish that we could see it right here instead of in that layer style panel, even just something that says protect highlights or protect shadows here. A lot of plugins have this on one has this and several others uh, where you can actually protect those areas of highlights and shadow. And essentially what those sliders are doing in those programs are blend. If they're just blending, if, if the underlying area is white, protect it. 
That's all it is. So instead of thinking it convoluted, just think if I protect the underlying layers whites, this is what's going to happen. And that's obviously if that's blend if gray. But now if we have that blend if as red or blue or green, it's the same thing. Remember, the opposite of red is cyan, the opposite of green is magenta, and the opposite of blue is yellow. So if you're in there and you want to protect all the yellow in your photo from the topmost layer, you just slide it accordingly. Remember to press that alt or option so it splits that handle in half so it creates a nice feathered transition instead of that paint smearing down the wall. So my name is Blake Rudis of Everyday HDR and HDR Insider. If you like this, please share it, comment on it, keep the conversation alive, and maybe tell us how you use those blend if options as well. Thank you very much.